So, welcome once again to Portsmouth This Week. And for the past couple of weeks, we've been featuring uh, folks from our school system here in town. Uh, last week, we had an elementary school principal. The week before that, we had the high school principal. And today, we have, I was going to call him Mr. In-Between, but he's, he is the principal of Portsmouth Middle School, Joe Amrol. Welcome to the program. Good morning, Bob. Great. Uh, tell us a bit about your background, Joe, uh, where you started and how long you've been in town and so forth. Well, I started as a teacher at, at uh, working, uh, teaching math and science in 7th and 8th grade at Portsmouth Middle School. Mm. Um, I went to, uh, then I went to Barrington Middle School to be an assistant principal for five years and then came back to be assistant principal at Portsmouth Middle and I've been principal for the last seven years. Uh, my formal education is at URI. I had a secondary education degree with a minor in physics uh, and um, I went to PC to get a double master's in administration and mathematics in the early, in, in the early uh, 1994. Quite a background and, uh, and, and you moved rather quickly. Uh, to get out of college and get one job and then laterally transfer and then go yeah. up to the top of your building and so forth. That's great. Um, I, I, I have an interest in middle schools because I worked in one years ago, but for the benefit of our viewers, um, what are kids like in the, that age that you handled? You have grades four to eight and the middle school is designed to meet their needs, what are they? What do kids at that age need? Well, they're very diverse. Uh, as you know, at Portsmouth Middle, we have a fourth and fifth grade upper elementary learning community. We also have uh, the traditional sixth, seventh, and eighth grade middle school model. Um, the range is significant, but what we try to do is provide a small learning environment for the students in, uh, in each and every grade. We have something called learning centers, where four teachers work with approximately 100 students and at the fourth and fifth grade level we have two teachers working with about 50 students to provide a small learning environment. But as you know, there's a lot of transformations that happen for a child that goes from uh, nine years old to 14 years old. Yeah. And so what we try to do is provide a nurturing environment, target their intelligences, whether, whether it be in uh, in robotics or athletics or in English or poetry or mathematics and we try to cultivate uh, the best that they can be knowing that they're going through many many physical oh, and emo social boy. emotional changes during you, that age. You've got your hands full having been <laughs> yeah. through myself uh, and, and there was some anxiety I think I read in the paper when uh, the fourth graders moved up to the middle school right. And that's not unlike the anxiety of, of people going from the middle school to the high school or kids going from elementary to the big building. It's a big change, and I was pleased to hear how you accommodate that anxiety and all that. Well, we have quite a few. Uh, right now we're preparing for our parent shadowing day. All third grade parents come and shadow students in the fourth grade for a half a day to see what it's like uh, for the current fourth graders. We have orientation nights. We have a uh, scavenger hunt in the summertime for the f incoming fourth grade students so that their anxiety level is reduced and they can feel good about being a part of a, of a larger school. Yeah. Uh, some of the things that kids like being in fourth grade at the middle school is their friends who might be at Hathaway or Melville, now they get to see their friends at lunch on a daily basis because all the fourth graders are together in one school. Um, we've done a lot to create a sense of community in fourth and fifth grade so that uh, mitigates a lot of the uh, anxiety that students might have. And again, it's always, regardless of whether you're in fourth grade or eighth grade, we really try to meet the needs of the individual child, where they're at, what their needs are, and try to create programming surrounding that. And you, you have, I don't know how many other than parents, people have been in that building, but it it's the ultimate in flexibility. So when you were told the fourth graders are coming, you were able to sort of, I say, isolate them, just keep them apart right. uh, in a section so that they could feel like they were, even though they were in this big, big building, they were sort of still in a sort of a mini school. And you've got um, two cafeterias, so I 
assume they can eat with their friends right. and and they don't bump into the eighth graders in the hallway, right? It is, uh, <laughs> other than the, the students, uh, fourth graders coming in on the bus with eighth graders, and even then they're segregated by uh, grade on the bus, uh, it's unlikely that they will see uh, an upperclassman in the course of their day. Uh, I, saw, I saw, when you gave me a tour, I saw a, a group of them, all grades moving out in the same direction, and they seemed very comfortable. They were going out to the front. Now, as I recall, the buses can go right around the building, huh, and, and drop off. Yeah, that's, a, that's another students. great thing. We've also that. added, we, uh, being a traditional middle school before the fourth and fifth grade uh, yeah. came, we also added a playground uh, for the students in fourth and fifth grade to have recess. Yeah. So they, yeah, they have yeah. all the comforts of if they were in a traditional uh, elementary program, yeah. uh, but they're part of a, of a bigger school. I think uh, from our tour and, and my viewing of various areas and meeting some of your staff members, I, I saw that you have a comprehensive plan there to handle, to, to be inclusive, right. everybody's in the ballpark, and diversified so that individual needs and talents are taken care of within that setting. That, years ago we used to have homogeneous grouping and we used to have the you know kids in all different sections and all that and these these kids are all in the same group well, well we believe that all ships rise with the rising tide mm. and one of the benefits of having students in heterogeneous groupings is that we can differentiate our classroom to meet the needs of all students uh, at different levels uh, it might be that in a particular English class students are reading at different levels but they're all there learning a particular skill or a concept um, I think Students evolve intellectually at different times, mm. and uh, we want to make sure that we leave the door open for all students to be able to uh, continue to have access to high-quality curriculum, high-quality mm. instruction, that's, that's without good. having to be segregated into uh, uh, prematurely into different areas based on, on strictly ability, which sometimes is very difficult to define, as you know. And, and it puts quite a I say it puts quite a pressure. I think your teachers and the people in middle schools have that mindset. Uh, unlike high school, some high schools, uh, we are departmentalized. We are highly content oriented. And so, you know, if, if you end in my section and you don't belong there, you know, right. but that doesn't happen at Portsmouth Middle School. Everybody's in the same boat and the teachers are trained and sensitized to spotting those people that need a little more right. uh, at one end or the other. And, and you're pleased with the, the curriculum there. <laughs> it's, it's one bang up curriculum, I see from what it I, is. actually after the program I want to <laughs> enroll, Joe. <laughs> it's, it's such a wonderful environment and there's just so much there for the kids. Um, I, I like, of course, the two teachers working in that, uh, the large unit, right. uh, it used to have Four teachers, but now you just you don't use the open space as much. But the cooperation is still there, right? And that seems to have good effects. Well, I, I think it's important uh, that teachers use uh, opportunities to do thematic units so they can share with students that you know you don't teach math in isolation. You don't teach science in isolation. There's a symbiotic relationship between the two, and you have to work together to make that happen. But it's also important for us to, at the middle school level, to really get to know the child. And the teachers, by having uh, working teams of two or teams of four, and just working with those 100 students uh, all day, if, there's, if a child's having a bad day, by the time the last period comes around, the teacher already knows, and they try to pump up that child. We're all about trying to see if we can make the child feel comfortable about being in middle school, knowing that they're going through young adolescent changes, and they're starting to recognize that school, in fourth grade when the child comes in, their world is their parents, their teachers, and them. Mm -hmm. By the time they get to eighth grade, it's all of that, mm -hmm. plus they start to understand that they, they have relevance to their peers. Mm -hmm. And we have to try to make sure that we have positive experience. And that's that programmed. That, that's, I say programmed, I don't mean uh, uh, sort of like a computer, but, but it's, it's desired or right. it's scheduled that way. Well, and, and you have to have a lot of activities. Kids want to be able, they don't oh, come yeah. to, if you ask oh, any child, they don't come group? to school oh. for math or science or English. They come to school to be with their friends, number yeah. one. Yeah. And number two, sometimes for some students, it, for them to perform better in the classroom, 
they need to have a connection with school. And what do we do? We have uh, theater performances. This week we're performing Peter Pan. They have multiple uh, sports opportunities after school. We have intramurals. We have chess club. We have science olympiad. We have math counts. All these different clubs are available for students uh, to be able to participate and to feel connected and to be representatives of the school if we play other, other schools. But those kind of activities really um, offer that connection that's so important today mm. to make sure that kids do well in school <coughs> by making connections in school. I had occasion some years ago to visit Brockton High School and it was like I think 5,000 kids in this yeah. complex and what they did was they broke it down into mini schools and you effectively do that in your building, which has how many kids? We have about 950 students altogether, grades four through eight. So we need to make sure that we don't uh, we have uh, connections between teachers and students. Uh, we have an advisory program where the students are paired up with every adult in the building, uh, and they're able to meet once a week for about 25, 30 minutes to do an activity that's non-academic, just so they can make a connection. Mm -hmm. We find, uh, unfortunately, with today's uh, society, there's a lot of disconnects sometimes at home, oh, yeah. sometimes there are issues that students have a hard time expressing, and it, it's a barrier for them to be able to learn. We find that by having them uh, connect with an adult that's not their teacher necessarily, mm -hmm. uh, over a period of time, if they have a concern, they can confide in that adult, and then we can have, use social services to provide them the support they need so they can be successful in school. How, how many teachers, uh, how, how many students does one of these advisors have? I mean, is it a... Usually it's a small group, anywhere between 12 and 15 students. Oh, okay. And uh, those students will, you know, they might, an activity might be writing uh, Christmas cards for veterans or for people that are shut in, or they might be doing something uh, uh, a little less creative. Maybe they'll be practice doing a particular group activity for that day a team building activity mm -hmm. just so we can build trust yeah. uh, and so that the student and the students and that teacher um, if something comes up during a year we can prevent things bad things from happening by um, getting involved yeah those and and they stay with the same teacher for, for three so they, four they, years they stay with the same teacher for the year and oh, then usually the we rotate in uh, for the following year um, Oh. That way, and the students don't always stay together as a group. Okay, they sometimes they switch. So that way it gives them opportunity yeah. for, for multiple teachers to connect with different kids. That, that's a great vehicle and one that I've read in textbooks that we should do, but I confess that in my career we didn't do yeah. it. But I was happy that Portsmouth Middle School is doing it we because those, those settings are so important for dealing with... I, I, thought of uh, bullying for one and peer pressure for another one and then those those changes that are just so puzzling <laughs> I'm too old to remember but that they can go that they can count on being with somebody every week half hour doing something that's unrelated to that but is an opportunity for it to come up in conversation or whatever and if if the teacher is is sensitive to something's bugging you, Joe, um, uh, or uh, is everything going all right, something. Counseling, I think, is a wonderful service, but uh, people don't think they need counseling. So <laughs> if the counselor or the assistant principal calls you in, you say, what I do? I don't belong here. You know, so with this kind of advisorship, that, that's, that's overcome. It's not there, but it works Well, in order so for students to feel good about learning, they have to feel safe in their environment. Mm. And sometimes, in order, you know, in order for them to progress and to be able to make academic gains, uh, which is our ultimate goal, they need to feel good about who they are in relationship to their colleagues, to their teachers, to their families. And we work with families to try to get the support they need to be successful. Yeah. Uh, but that's part of what we're trying to do is create personal learning communities, small learning communities oh, so that it. students can feel yeah. good. And we have, uh, we are the biggest school in Newport County, uh, population wise and whatnot. But we're also one of the higher performing schools in Newport County. And because the teachers have rigorous standards, they have, uh, we put a lot of emphasis on professional development for our teachers mm. to be able to meet the needs of what students need to be. But 
I think even, uh, in all my travels throughout the state, I think Portsmouth Middle School is, I'm very proud of the school, in that it, it has a, a value system in terms of core values, honesty, integrity, uh, teamwork, uh, all those things that we, we think are important. They're more like 1950s values. <laughs> but right? we're, we're preparing them. We're preparing students to be 21st century learners. So even though our, our, our core values and our structure is very traditional, we believe that all the things that we do, our curriculum, our uh, methodologies in the classroom with integration of technology and robotics that we brought, <laughs> we brought here today to share with you is important. We do an uh, Outstanding Citizen of the Month program where teachers select students for doing good work for being good citizens. We present uh, students with a Portsmouth Character Hold Counts P. Hold that to this camera. Uh, I, I don't know if he can read it, but. I don't know if he can either, but. get a good close up of it. We share this with students throughout the school. They have a, uh, an extraordinary the uh, lunch with the uh, principal and the assistant principal. And we celebrate the specialness that they bring to our school. Because these are the students that sometimes go unnoticed but these are the students that make a difference in our school and create the culture, which is a safe and supportive culture for all the students there. And for those students that do their homework or go beyond, they are the leaders that inspire other kids to do their best when they're in school. And we think that's very important. Well, we've come a long way in education. And uh, there was a time, I don't know if it occurred in your uh, career or in your growth, yeah. but there was a time that uh, you were suddenly dropped off at the door and you're in this strange building and you're walking around and I guess if it's an early grade you cry, if it's a later grade you fight <laughs> and eventually somebody who had great wisdom said, oh you'll get over it, oh you'll get over it, but you don't do that. No. You, you let them seek their identity and their, and their worth in the school and that that's just so Every school is not without and problems, and we have students oh. who make bad choices, but we're very fortunate to have students that come to school ready to learn with very good core values. Yeah. But even then, students, they make bad decisions. But we try to uh, bring them back so, to be in a positive place so they can succeed. Is the, 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 you're the second one I've talked to now that talks about decisions, and uh, our elementary school principal last week talked about choices yeah. and her approach to so many things is make good choices and it sounds like you're doing the same thing. It is. I don't think there's ever a bad kid. I think that good kids make bad choices and if we come from that mindset then we can get them through those middle years where and, and, and it's hard for people to think back when they were in sixth, seventh, and eighth grade when maybe they were hormonally challenged <laughs> and they made a bad choice. I love that. And then I'm you've got to realize these are good kids. They just made a bad choice yeah. and they'll be okay. Yeah. But sometimes it's a shock to the parents and, and sometimes it could be distracting to the teachers. Oh. But we have to, we constantly, we know that. We deal with that oh, every you're year. The pro, you're the pros. And, and we got to make sure that we get the kids to that next level. Uh, and knowing, re taking responsibility for their actions, but also improving um, uh, on their behaviors and, 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 and being positive, contributing uh, members of, uh, of society. And, and it, starts, it starts at the very young le levels mm -hmm. in, in, in kindergarten all the way up to high school. And we are there to guide them through that, those middle years. Now the other thing that I want to just touch briefly on was that in this uh, hetero uh, grouping, there are brighter students, more talented students, and then at the other end, there are students who are struggling, who are falling behind. And you accommodate both. You want to tell we us do. how? Well, we, we have a, a half hour period each day where students who struggle, who are not at the grade level for reading or math, they work with what with, with traditionally was a reading teacher or a math coach. Today, they're working with interventionists. These teachers work with these kids every day based on their performance in class, uh, and we really hone on in their skills and beef up their level of proficiency in reading mm, and writing the room. and math. And, uh, and we do it very um, in a way that is going to help motivate the kids to want to be better. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so far, it's proven to be pretty successful. And I think uh, we're probably a model for other schools in terms of how uh, we integrate the program uh, on a regular basis. And I'm hoping that next year we can continue to improve that. And for students at the other level, I was we, have, we have uh, uh, blended learning opportunities where students can take courses 
uh, online if they feel that they're advanced enough. And some, sometimes students might be in sixth grade, but they're taking a seventh grade math class mm -hmm, if mm -hmm, they're really mm -hmm. at that upper level. Yeah. But we want to make sure that everybody has a chance to work at their level, be proficient at what they do, and continue to excel. Yeah, uh, you, you don't want uh, uh, students to get those, those brighter students or, or talented students, you don't want them to get bored no. with so-called standard, uh, everybody, you know, has the same curriculum. The other thing that, uh, that impressed me, and it didn't surprise me, it impressed me, was the condition of the building. Yeah. That building's 43 years old. I remember walking through it when the, the paint was just drying, and it looks pretty darn good. Well, I think if we keep up the building, yeah. like anything else, we had an outstanding custodian by the name of Dwayne Frank that was there for 40 plus years who took a tremendous amount of pride and effort to make sure that every single part of that building, and even today with Mr. Singleton, our new head custodian, to make sure that everything is up to snuff. And uh, the students see, respect that, the teachers respect that, and so do the uh, custodians. And, and that prolongs the life of the building uh, and, and it helps us uh, have a place where it's cheery and, and bright. Yeah, and, yeah. And, 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 and I like the wide corridors too. They do. <laughs> so many schools to chintz a little bit on money you give you the sort of bowling alley. It is. <laughs> and then they say, all right, everybody pass, <laughs> and they crash into one another. In fact, the school I was in, I don't know if you remember, uh, had one-way stairs. Yeah. Do you remember that? <laughs> <laughs> had the teacher like this, okay, this is a, an up staircase. No, this is a down staircase. Our, our well, infrastructure is, is awesome in the sense that we have uh, great spacing. It's one level only. Uh, the the library which you got to see uh, is, is, is probably one of the best libraries in the county, if not the best, because yeah. it's friendly, it's welcoming. Oh yeah. Uh, we still have the 1970 uh, George Jetson chairs where the kids can swivel. <laughs> we have the <laughs> carpeted uh, seats where the students can sit with the pillows and be able to be comfortable. It's a very in place. inviting place. As as a youngster, I could imagine after the initial strangeness and, and so forth, I can imagine that it's fun to walk around that place right, and is. take advantage of those things. I want to just touch briefly on the so-called core uh, curriculum and the, these tests that are coming up. That, that's new uh, to you and to parents and the teachers. Uh, how, how are you doing with that? Are you well, it, it's, it's, it's these decisions are made at the Rhode Island Department of Education. Yeah. Uh, it's uh, I, I think we need assessments because just like if you went to a doctor on a yearly checkup, you'd want to know what the blood results were and what you can do to be better, whether exercise more or uh, meet, maybe have more calcium in your, in your blood, what, what not. Assessments are important to give teachers a guide as to where the students yeah. are at so yeah. we can modify a program to, to support them. Yeah. But I think it's also very important that we have a very solid curriculum and that everyone in the state has the same curriculum that makes sense for kids and it makes sense for where they need to be, yeah. either being college bound or career ready. Uh, those, cur th those curriculum standards have to be uh, pretty solid. You feel that you're in line with the core curriculum in your own building and the rest of the state will have to take care of itself. Well, I, right? I think the, there, there are many uh, people that are very supportive of the core curriculum, but one of the things I think that with so much uh, uh, accountability measures that are put into place, may, mostly by uh, the State Department oh, of Education, yeah. oh, the federal government, because they I all have you. to yeah. justify where all the dollars are spent. That's right. But I think one of the things that sometimes we lose in that, Bob, and I think it's very important, is creativity. And one of the things that we really think that we want to inspire with kids in middle school and beyond is the ability to be creative, that it's not just about the skill. The skill is important, yep. don't get me wrong, yep. Yep. but yep. the skill without a creative mind is what sets this country apart from many of the countries in the world. How do you apply that? How do you become critical thinkers? And that's important in our, in our, in our oh, school and indeed. it's important in our society. It's, uh, it, it's quite a challenge. Uh, before, we're running low on time, I want you to, Sh show your toy here, <laughs> well, we have, uh, we we'd all be disappointed. One of our measures this year is to try to <laughs> be ready for the 21st century is to really have a robotics uh, program from grades four through eight. Every student has robotics, they do mm. programming, they program their robot using computers, and then they make the do, robot do different things based on their program. 
Now, I'm not sure if I'm going to get a goal today, but I'm going to try. You know, I was not a <laughs> soccer player. Just don't hit me in the <laughs> eye with, you, with that ball. <laughs> but a student programmed this uh, to make the arm move in a certain pattern, and hopefully I can get it to work. Let's see if I can move over here a little bit. Oh, it was a goal. See, Bob, you uh, you are Score. a there's, there's a goal for you. <laughs> and there's other things that the the uh, the robot can do, but it requires some programming and knowledge. And really, what students are going to be doing one of the largest increases in jobs right now is robotics laden oh, fields, oh, and we big, need people that are going to be robotic savvy. Well, also to be able to be competitive. Them, it gets them in the mindset to uh, the technology, and I was going to mention that somewhere in the, in the interview, sure. uh, is, is dazzling and a great deal of money is spent on it. But I think you told me that it's not a toy. All of that stuff is aimed at uh, enhancing learning. Technology is not learning. No. Technology advances learning. Right. So it's a tool just like if you had a hammer, uh, it doesn't make you a carpenter. But the skills that you learn in carpentry with the right tools can get you to be a real good carpenter. Yeah. Well, the same thing with students today in the technology age. We right now are looking next year to do, uh, a, uh, we're part of a two-year program where the middle school is next to perhaps look at uh, professional development for teachers, getting all trained up on different programs that are available out there commercially for students. Mm -hmm. And then in our year two, we're hoping that we will have the uh, available funds to provide more technology in the classrooms mm -hmm. uh, and the teachers being able to use those technologies in, in concert with their curriculum area. Yeah. Well, that's, so they're going to use the computers key. in science, computers in that's writing, yeah. computers oh, in yeah. robotics. It's a wonderful tool, but it's, it's, a, it's just that, a tool. It's a tool. And you have to keep that in mind. The other thing I want to just mention before we wind up is um, how's your PR? How's your relationship with the community? Do a lot of people come in and do you go out to you know, some of the businesses in town or the, the Navy base, the Raytheons, I mean, you've got a lot of resources there. Is there, is there some interaction? We have uh, invited uh, parents and uh, they, ca they came in to do our career day that we just did this past winter. We had over 45 parents and business members to come in and share what they do. This is the, the, the work that we do and yeah. this is how we share it. That's very uh, invaluable. And we also uh, have a wonderful PTO that is uh, meets monthly that does a lot of things for the, our students in terms of uh, recreational activities uh, for them to come back at, at on a Friday night, whether it be a social or whether it be to come back and, and play in the gym or whatnot. Um, we also uh, have a very strong volunteer organization, and many of them volunteer in our schools by volunteering our only uh, bookstore, uh, which is yeah, open in the morning and yeah, at lunch, yeah, 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 and the yeah, students yeah. really participate with that, and the parents are wonderful in terms of volunteering their time to support that bookstore, and also special activities that we have throughout the school. We didn't, uh, I didn't mention it, and my wife will hit me over the head, the arts, yeah. art, music, athletics, library, uh, I happened to be in the, the go into the, the music room, and the teacher was teaching chess <laughs> so <laughs> so they're all into it and again that enhances well we're about winding up here and I sure. appreciate you coming is there anything we left out um, anything you want to highlight or leave the viewers with well I, I I think we have a very dynamic middle school that offers the needs for students uh, we're always looking for ideas and suggestions for uh, trying to enhance our learning for students we also uh, a very supportive, we, we're very thankful for the support that the community has given the middle school over the years. Joe, I want to thank you very much for coming on the program. It's been enlightening and uh, you folks uh, will be back next week with uh, a different principal. Until then, Bob Ponitowski wishing you the best.